Welcome back students, Mr. McCoy here, going to give you instructions today on how to get moving on your first scratch project. In the last warm up, scratch warm up 9, uh, it looked just like this and you learned about wall detection and how to improve movement so that it's fluid if you use a series of if statements, uh, checking to see if a key is pressed then you can get rid of that lag for whenever you first press keys and it also helps you do things like moving diagonal. Uh, so it's very responsive. And we also talked about using if touching color as a way of detecting walls and setting a person back to the start and so you could make a pretty easy maze. Your project is going to be based around this idea, but I want you to do something way more interesting with it than just this simple maze here. This warm-up just gave you the general idea, but let me show you what a basic version of your project would look like. So here's a maze game called The Legend of Fred that I made. When we play, you can see our hero Fred up here needs to navigate through this maze to get to the princess. It uses those same arrow key movements. And if you touch a wall, you get sent back to the beginning. If you click this See Inside button, then you can see inside of the code. You can see the game was made using only three sprites. The maze itself is drawn on the stage. You can look to see what code I've put inside of each sprite. I even added a variable for death count so it keeps track of how many times you died or touched the wall. Whenever you get your hero, I'm just going to uh, cheat and drag my hero over here. Whenever you do get to the princess, some music is played and it says you win. So that's still a fairly basic version of the game. For those of you who are more advanced with Scratch, maybe you can turn it into something a little bit fancier. Here's the more advanced version of The Legend of Fred that I made. There's a whole lot more going on in this one. There's obstacles that you have to avoid. There's buttons that cause traps. Uh, there are keys that you have to like get this blue key to make this blue door go away, get this red key to make this red door go away, you have to have the sword in order to kill the dragon. So there's a lot more variables in this one, there's a lot more animation. Again you can click see inside to take a look at uh, all of the code and all of the sprites that I needed in order to make this happen. You're certainly not required to get this advanced with it. I was just having a lot of fun and I kept thinking, uh, how could I add something extra to this? If you're having fun with the project and you want to add elements similar to what I have, you're welcome to look through my code, try to figure it out, try to figure out new obstacles that you'd like to put in there. Um, feel free to have fun, but you're certainly not required to go this in-depth. 